Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. We
Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow of our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus Christ, risen Master, we come to you in sorrow of our sins. We have not loved our neighbors or any stranger in need of mercy and care. We have lived by the light of our own lives, as faithless as and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Jesus Christ, risen Master, we have come to you in sorrow for our sins. We have lived for this world alone. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, who has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy.
let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who stooped to raise fallen humanity through the childbearing of Blessed Mary, grant that we who have seen your glory revealed in our human nature and your love made perfect in our weakness may daily be renewed in your image and conformed to the pattern of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is taken from the Isaiah chapter 61, verses 10 to 11. I exhort for joy in Yahweh. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed, him, clothed me in garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in a cloth of saving justice. Like a bridegroom wearing his garment, like a bride adorned in her jewel. For has the earth sent up its shout, <coughs> his suit and the garden makes the seed sprout. So Lord Yahweh makes saving justice and praise spring up in the sight of all nations. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading is taken from the from the book of Galatians, chapter four, verses four to seven. But when the completion of the time came, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born a subject of the law, to redeem the subjects of the law, so that we could receive adoption as sons. As you are sons, God has sent into our hearts the Spirit of His Son, crying, "Abba, Father." And so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir, by God's own act. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gradual hymn. Alleluia, alleluia. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Because he has looked upon the humility, the humiliation of his servant. Yes, from now onwards, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his faithful love extends age after age to those who fear him. 
He has used the power of his arm. He has rooted the arrogant of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and raised high the lowly. He has filled the starving with good things, sent the rich away empty. He has come to the help of Israel his servant, mindful of his faithful love, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of Christ our Lord. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today is the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary and often uh, on this feast you will hear again and again the words about Mary's faithfulness. You will hear about words about servanthood, humility or even the word humiliation as we've just heard in the in the gospel reading. Somehow one way or another, we, we may say it's wonderful, it's, it's great that we, we, we say praise, we sing praises to this great person, Mary. And yet, if we spend some time to reflect our, about our own lives, do I, as a human person, as a real human person, do I really want to be a servant? Or in some kind of Bible translation, a handmaid, a, a, even a slave? Do you want to serve? And then if you go back into the Gospel reading, it's somehow one way or another, we, we, we may agree with some of the concepts described in the Gospel. Oh, the, the powerful, the arrogant, those who are rude, they will be pulled down. Yes, fine, we agree with that. But somehow I say, well, those who are on high, they will be pulled down. The princes will be pulled down. The rich will go away empty. And yet, do we really want to see that in our real life? At the same time, when we go back to the Old Testament and, and to many parts of our human history and also in the Bible, good people are often blessed with financial wealth. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they are all blessed with servants, slaves, cows, cattle, all this kind of wealth. And this is, this is counted as their blessing. God blessed them because of their faithfulness to God. So how do we understand Mary's words? Perhaps it is about our, how we understand ourselves. If I come to you and say, well, you're going to uh, wash my feet, you're going to uh, feed me, and if I, am, uh, if I need something, I just have my hands open and you'll give, whether it's money, whether it's food, uh, anything. What will you do? What will you how will you respond to my requests? You may, perhaps one or two requests, you may say, yes, fine, I'll give you something. But, but perhaps not wash me, <coughs> wash my feet. Because your relationship with me it's not that kind of relationship that we, you, we, certainly you would not be that personal in that sense. And yet, for those of us, I'm sure, like Mary, mums, you will do that to your baby. You will do that to your child. If your child, if your baby is, is hungry, just simply have the hands out. You will feed the person. You will, because you have a very close, intimate relationship to that person, to the point that, that you will give everything, including your own life. Being a servant means that there is always the master. Mary sees herself in relation to God as the servant. She is willing to see herself as someone who is going to follow God's way, 
in her own life. And that is how she understands her own self in relation to everything that she sees, in relation to God, to other human beings, to anything that she has got or hasn't got. In the Gospel reading, there is some kind of sense about money, richness, being the, those rich go away empty, the powerful, the princes, and so on. These things, in, as I said earlier, it's not so much about if you're being wealthy, it doesn't mean that you are bad, or if you're powerful, a prince, it doesn't mean that God hates you. That it is, is how you see yourself in relation to wealth, how you see your, your relationship in relation to power, status, beauty, your physical well-being, your, your talents. If you rely your own, your, your fairy, all your confidence, your own, everything, all that you are, your identity, only on one particular thing, for example, wealth, most e the easiest thing that we can see, then there is an issue. Who are you? Jesus will ask you that question. Why do you want to become wealthy? Now, if you ask me, Frankie, do you want to be wealthy? I want to be wealthy because I've got so much I want to do. I want to travel with my family. I've, got, I want to, I've, I've still got many, many places in the world I've never been. I've never been to the North Pole. I've never been to the moon, the stars. I, I would like to have money. Yes, I want to be wealthy. And do I want to be powerful? Yes, I want to be powerful because there are so many things I want to do and I want to change and there are things I, I need power. I need money. But Am I happy now that I don't really have that much money? I am happy. And do I know who I am, even without those money and power and status and so on? I am happy and I know who I am. And I'm not saying that this, I'm, I'm not saying this in, 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 in a way that I can boast. This is simply me, Frankie Lee. And, and, and somehow part of that Christian journey is to learn, and it's, a, it's, going to be, it's going to be a lifelong learning path, to learn, like Mary, about our own self. Do I know who I am? Am I confident in who I am, God, what God has made me into being? And if I know who, and, and, to, and, be, and knowing who I am, then I know how I will see myself in relation to other human beings as well as all the things that I see, including wealth, power, status, and so on, fame, and so on. If I'm health, if for Mary, they need money to survive. They need, they have, they have, they need food to survive. And yet, they are not that post security, that sense of their faith, Mary and Joseph, their faith, their confidence isn't founded upon what they have got. They see themselves, they understand themselves in relation to God. And therefore, they can move forward in faith. Why do I want to have money? Perhaps because I am in fear. If I have no money, I may not have anywhere to live. I may not have food to eat. I may not be listened to. And therefore, I need money. But then, all of us know one way or another, deep down, if people only listen to you, if people only want to befriend you when you have money, they are not really your friends and you are not really as confident as you think you are. Mary is someone who knows who she is, and, be, and she knows that in relation to God. And therefore, she can move forward in faith, not in fear. Yes, I may not have much. I may have much later, I don't know. As I've shared with you, uh, 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 some time ago about Mary's faith. 
So much in her life is so uncertain. What will happen to this, to this baby? Will I even not think about the baby? Will I as a person, as a young w woman being uh, a young girl pregnant in, those, in 2000 years Middle, uh, Middle East, so much risks that she will have to take in her life, being stoned to death by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the people in her village, being shamed, being outcasted by her own family and community, being forsaken by her own love, Joseph. What will happen to this baby? Will this baby be healthy? Will this grow, baby grow up to be a good person, a right person, a person who will love, who will share, who will, who will care for the mother? There's so much uncertainty. All of you, as fathers and mothers, you will know. So much uncertainty in your life. And there's so much that you can be frightened of. And yet, you all move in faith and live in faith. Because there is a relationship deep down an intimate relationship that you see between yourself and the person you love. Your child, your husband, your wife, your, your father, your mother, your good friend. And there, and in that relationship, you know who you are. And therefore, your identity is no longer built by something that is that can be quantified, like money, like status, like power, like fame. These things help to build up who you are, but they do, do not define yourselves. In our world, we are often being defined by values that can be quantified. You are powerful, therefore I listen to you. You are of a certain status, therefore I obey you. I am your servant. I am your employee. But when you have no money, when you have no status, I'm no longer your employee because you cannot pay me. But Mary, she understands herself in relation to God. She is willing to say to the Lord, to say to God, I am your handmaid. I am your servant. Because in God, Mary finds her identity. And with that identity, she has full confidence about her own self, of who she is. And she can, with that confidence, she can move in faith, not in fear. Each one of us in Mary, we have to ask ourselves that question. Do I know who I am? Am I building my identity and confidence in the things that only can be seen? money, status. It may not be about this. We don't need to be standing on moral high ground and judging others. But perhaps some of us, deep down, there might be something that we are afraid of, of losing. Because these things define, we think, define who we are. Maybe our musical talents. But if we know who we are in relation to God, we know that, yes, one day, I may not be as healthy as I am now. My physical well-being may not be, I may not be as strong as I am now. Yet, whether I am weak, whether I'm strong, I still know who I am. And I can be happy because I am still having a close relationship with God and with those whom I love. It's important as Christians to ask ourselves, do I know who I am? Am I confident in my relationship with God, with one another, and with myself? Mary understands that relationship with God. And therefore, regardless of her future, the uncertainty of her future, the risks that she will have to take, she can move forward in faith. And she pour out love for Joseph, for Jesus, for all those that she meet, including Elizabeth, the great cousin who, who blessed her to be the woman, to be the, 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 the most important woman, and the, the child in her womb, being the most blessed child that we can ever have in our human world. Jesus, our Lord. Do ask ourselves, 
where do we find our confidence? How do we see ourselves as ourselves, our identity? So that hopefully, in faith, one day, as we grow, myself included, as we grow together, we know that, like a marriage vow, in goodness, in sickness, in good health, in wealth, in poverty, we still live in love, we live in joy, we live in peace, because we know who we are in relation to God, in relation to others, in relation to yourself. God bless you all. Please stand for the Nicene Creed, which you can find on page 9 of the Office of <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confess the faith of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God? We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made, of one being with the Father, Do you believe in God incarnate, who suffered, died, and was buried, and rose from the dead, that you may have eternal life? If you do so, confess and say, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified in a conscious heart, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in the borders of his wishes. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us to the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. Do you believe in the baptism and doctrines of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church? We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of intercession. As we pray to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we say with Mary, Lord, Lord have, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. As we pray today, let us all put in our hearts, first of all, Canon Aaron, for his strength and speedy recover, speedy recovery, and also in our mind, all the people who suffered from the Black Ring Storm. Your prophets of old foretold the day when the virgin would conceive and bear a son who would be called God with us. Help us to look forward to your deliverance and to seek the fullness of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Your angel declared to Mary that she was to be the mother of the Saviour. Help every Christian person to be open to your word and obedient to your will. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Mary rejoiced with Elizabeth and sang your praise. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Help us to live joyful lives that claim your praise. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Mary bore a son of David's line a king whose reign would never end. Bless all the nations of the world with Christ's gift of peace. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. The child Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in the home of Mary and Joseph. Strengthen our homes and families and keep under your protection all those whom we love. 
Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. At the foot of the cross of Christ stood his mother, and from the cross she received his lifeless body in her arms. Give comfort and healing to all who suffer, and all who watch the suffering of those they love. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. The Apostle John saw a vision of a woman in heaven, robed with the sun. Bring us with all those who have died in the faith of Christ to share the joy of heaven with Mary and all the saints. Lord, have mercy on those who fear you. Holy is your name. Now, in a moment of silence, let us offer our own prayers and petitions to our Father in heaven. Almighty and everlasting God, your handmaid Mary magnified your name and rejoiced in your saving love, trusting that in that same love we ask all this in our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the humble, blessed Virgin Mary be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace with you. God our Father, your handmaid Mary fed your son at her virgin breast. Nourish us at this table with the bread of heaven and cup of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us bread of everlasting life and make us sons of your true
as this bread was scattered, and then gathered and made one. So may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Wisdom has built her a house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, God of heaven. Your Lord is the greatness, power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own. and our salvation, Almighty Father, ever-living God, to proclaim the wonders of your, of your good work in all your saints, and on the feast of Mary, ever-blessed, to echo her praise of your loving kindness. For you have truly done great things, and holy is your name, and your mercy is on those who fear you in every generation. When you looked with favour on your lowly servant, you remembered your promise of mercy, and gave the world through her Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Through him the hosts of heaven adore you, and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in the triumphant hymn of praise. Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we proclaim. perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we bring before you this bread and this cup, we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We pray you, O gracious Father, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the first born of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall serve you.
Let us pray. God Most High, whose hand made all the Word made flesh, we thank you that in this sacrament of our redemption, you visit us with your Holy Spirit and overshadow us by your power. Strengthen us to walk with Mary the joyful path of obedience, and so to bring forth the fruits of holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please stand for the blessing of this epistle. When the Word became flesh, earth was rejoiced to heaven in the womb of Mary. May the love and obedience of Mary be our example. Amen. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and homes. Amen. May you be filled with the joy of the Spirit and the gifts of eternal hope. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those whom you love, now and always. among women, and blessed is the fruit of her womb. All generations shall her Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Holy is his name. All generations shall her Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hear my servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's very nice to see you all back in the chapel. Last week we had uh, to stay. Uh, we had to go to Holy Trinity Cathedral's chapel uh, because of uh, the typhoon's damage. Although we can come back today, uh, we understand that there are many parts of Hong Kong are still not only being affected by the typhoon but severely damaged by the black rainstorm. So please put all those people support in your prayers and we hope that uh, they will be able to recover as soon as they can. Uh, especially we know that in Shai O, uh, the whole village is now down uh, because the road has been destructed, uh, although I think uh, it has been gradually resuming. So please, especially put them in your prayers and hope that we can, uh, they can back, go back to their normal life. And today, uh, we also have to especially pray for Canon Eric, uh, who is uh, sick. Uh, not very seriously, we hope, uh, but uh, last night the dean and I had a message from him saying that he can't come back to say, don't, don't mix up, uh, he's not Canon Eric, uh, not uh, a set in the pew sheet. Uh, we actually welcome Dean Frankie back today for the third consecutive week, so welcome Dean. <laughs> um, it's a very uh, special occasion indeed, uh, especially we celebrate the Feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, if oh and uh, also uh, remember that two weeks ago we had a celebration for our 10th anniversary. So today in the echo uh, gallery we have a whole page, uh, two pages in fact, of our chapel. So on your way out, please remember to take one of this. This is to be very uh, memorable because of. Uh, I, don't, I think it's very rare for a chapel to be featured in two whole pages. So especially thanks to Shelley and uh, Raymond 
and Eric and also uh, Father Bill who although he is now back to the UK but he wrote uh, most of the stories here and then we translated it back to Chinese so please bring it back uh, and uh, frame it and then put it on your uh, yeah, on your wall or whatever okay and especially we have a very handsome Dean in the middle of the page and try to find yourself I think most of you can find yourself here um, and also want to welcome all the newcomers today. Who are new? Can you uh, show your hands? No, I'm sure there are some, but don't worry, you're shy. Hey, hello, welcome. Okay. Um, don't be shy. If you are new, please uh, stay behind and find a link at the back or Raymond at the back uh, to uh, add you back into our WhatsApp group so that we know that you, you will get more latest information from the church and also from our chapel. And today we are very glad to see all the children's back uh, because it is the uh, registration day for our Sunday school. Uh, for parents, uh, please uh, remember to spread the news to your friends if they want to join the Sunday school. We just started again uh, every Sunday at 10.30 while you are here worshiping God with us together. Your child can uh, go to Sunday school uh, to learn more about the life of Jesus and of the faith. And then uh, on the church news, which has been sent to you uh, through the WhatsApp, I uh, just want to highlight a few. Uh, first of all, also important for the adults, if you can uh, focus on page three. Uh, can Eric just announce that we will start our new circle, a new uh, cycle of the baptism and confirmation classes? Uh, which will begin on the 5th of October. So please pay attention. If you have not been baptized, uh, you, you have to join us from the 5th of October. So please WhatsApp Canon Eric. Uh, the baptism will take place on the day of Pentecost, which will be the 5th of May 2024. I repeat, uh, for the course starts on the 5th of October, the baptism will take place on the 19th of May. And then for those who are baptized and not yet confirmed, um, the course will start in uh, after the day of Pentecost on th Thursday the 6th of June 2024. So this confirmation course is only for those who have been baptized. Okay, so remember to join them. But uh, on note number special note number three, as, as written by Canon Eric, if you are, you were, baptized in the Catholic Church, Lutheran Church, or Methodist Church, or any church, uh, other denominations of churches that you have been baptized, you will have to attend both courses uh, in order to be confirmed uh, by the Anglican Church. So please pay attention to that, okay? And a very special situation if you have been even confirmed by the uh, Catholic Church, uh, you will also have to attend the Confirmation Church in order to be received. So it's actually very complicated. <laughs> if you want to know more, please uh, feel welcome to find uh, one of the Congregation Working Group members and Dean Frankie will explain to you. Okay, so either you want to be baptized or confirmed or received, uh, please uh, find uh, any one of us. Okay. Uh, and then uh, there was some news from the cathedral which I'm not going to uh, go into details. But uh, we are also recruiting servers and choir members so please come to join us. If you're adults, uh, you can join us, okay? not just children around, but choir and servers. Uh, you're very happy to join us. And for servers, uh, please pay attention to point to on, uh, oh, where is it, sorry. Okay, uh, page 14. Uh, we will be having uh, a special Eucharist to celebrate the 180th anniversary of the Anglican Church in Hong Kong. And everyone is welcome to join the Thanksgiving service, but for service especially, if you want to serve at that Eucharist, please let me know by today, because today is the deadline for application. So please, uh, for service, it's a very special occasion, so please join us uh, serving uh, at the Eucharist together. And uh, yeah, for the rest of the notice, you can uh, refer to uh, our, uh, our notice, e-notice circulated on the WhatsApp group. And again, welcome to all new and old members of the chapel. Uh, please stay behind down the, down the stairs. We'll have some tea receptions and we will chit chat together after the service. Thank you and may God bless you all.
steadfast in his faith, free from sin and safe from danger. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.